Hi everyone. Uh, so this is going to be the lab session. Uh, I wanted to pre-record some of the lab session just to go over the content so that you have a permanent record and you can get it on your own. And but lab time itself will be will have sort of lab periods during the normal lecture time. I still have to decide the exact time and dates, but it's no, normally going to be during the lecture period so that I know everyone is available. That, those times in particular will be synchronous and give you the opportunity, I hope, to be able to ask questions for us to go over or re-go over certain content of the course. That's what they're for. Essentially, like a glorified office hours, but everyone can show up, everyone can listen, and they're recorded. Uh, or maybe like a tutorial more than anything else. But the labs themselves, I want to have pre-recorded labs so that you can work it on, uh, work through it on your own, and then you can always ask questions later. So this is lab one. Um, let me have a quick, hopefully, quick discussion of what we're going to be going over. So uh, there's going to be some live coding. Uh, so I like giving warnings in advance that always they always end up leading to problems. <laughs> live coding is always the kiss of death. It's dangerous. Uh, I'll quickly show you Blueberry and Pineapple's adventure. Uh, I think it's Blueberry and Orange's adventure now. They changed it. I made a dino, di uh, dino dinner game. Um, but Pineapple and Blueberry's Adventure was made by my kids. Uh, I'll throw up some code to make a Pong-like game, but the actual Pong game, uh, there's a link to it, and I'm assuming the instructions are going to be far better than what I'm going to come up with now. They, they've already been done. They've been properly vetted before, so it should be fairly clear on how to make a Pong game, but I wanted to show you some variants on it to play with it a little bit. Um, and then we might look at some other things. The whole point of this exercise, the whole point of assignment one is just to, again, get you experience programming, get you experience thinking algorithmically, and not worrying about whether something compiles or you have syntax errors. You can't get a syntax error with a visual language. Visual languages are not quite as powerful as something like C. C is actually used for a darn good reason, but it's low risk, fast implementation environment. And the weird thing is people think that they're so radically different they are the same uh, in a lot of respects. The way you break down a problem for Scratch is the exact same as you do in C, uh, in C. So if you get stuck in C later on, just keep in mind that you've already done this. You've already succeeded at this when you did it with you know, Scratch or Lightbot or whatever the case is. There might be some syntax errors, but those are minuscule compared to the actual thinking about how you parse or deal with code. So. If you can do Scratch, I think you could do the rest of the course, not a problem. And you're going to quickly figure out if you're any good at programming this way as well. So uh, if you need extra practice, by the way, and you really want to be a nerd, Code Combat, it's D&D &D as programming. I thought it was the most wonderfully nerdy thing I've ever seen in my life. Give it a try. Uh, it allows you to go through like a, like a dungeon with a character and with swords and stuff like that. Uh, but you're programming what your character is going to do and how they interact with that orc or how they get past the blade trap. Uh, really kind of fun. And it's free for the first series of levels. Uh, there's also Lightbot, and that is a, it is an amazingly powerful tool for teaching programming, given the fact all it is is a little robot jumping around, lighting up blocks. Uh, it even goes over recursion, so it's... It can go almost any age, but the 9 and up version, I'm assuming you guys might want to do. It's only 9 and up because kids can do it. That doesn't mean that adults aren't going to learn something. I learned, a, I was amazed at how well it was teaching how to break down a big problem. So uh, so here's an intro to Scratch. This is a Blueberry and Pineapple's Adventure, or I think it was called Blueberry and Orange's Adventure. Uh, this is done by my two boys uh, in the summer when I wasn't looking. Yes, when I wasn't looking. Uh, so hopefully we'll it'll just launch here um, so you can actually just play the game it's a two-person game if you if you're wondering so I think when it goes up and down this guy's gonna get eaten by a shark and that's the end of the game that's it it plays a little sound effect and we can look inside the code itself and see what they're doing so here's blueberry this is the bluefish not exactly <laughs> yeah uh, if you press if so you go to that particular position to start and in a forever loop they're checking to see if the key is pressed if the key is pressed move it up by down, uh, four or down by four if you're pushing it up or down key that's it the so this blue fish follows these instructions so when you click the flag it then moves it to this position and then forever it will continuously loop 
around and around forever this these two if statements if this is pushed if this is pushed okay here's the sharks logic if that's cl clicked then forever it's going to rotate it's going to uh, set the rotation cell left to right I think that actually could have been it doesn't have to actually be in a forever loop I think we should actually fix that um, it was done by a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old, might I remind you. Anyways, here's the the flag was clicked, so I start the, my program. Then all of these things, every one of these, if the green flag is clicked, all of these will start off. It will go to some random position with at a at 178, the X position over here. It will then move this direction by minus four each turn. It will then wait. Uh, it will then every 0.9 seconds, it will create a clone of itself and send that across and then a clone, clone, clone of itself. Each time I start a new clone, when I start a new clone, I start off in that position, and then I move it to over this way. Um, if, when I click this thing, I'll switch the costume to this particular shark. If I'm touching blueberry or touching pineapple, uh, touching orange or blueberry, that's an or statement. If what this is true or this is true, then I'm gonna switch the costume, play the bite sound, and then stop everything in the entire game. This, by the way, is an or statement. We'll, we'll look at propositional logic soon enough. When I start a new clone, I switch the costume, and then I move, and then I also check this. Uh, now, what they could have done is actually just hidden the shark initially, because the very first shark does this whole thing and this whole thing, but it doesn't really need to do it that way. OK, and here's oranges. Let's switch gears, and let's look at, here's my duck game, my duck pong game. Uh, let's look inside of it. Here's duck pong. My duck itself, I give an instruction. So when you click the green flag, I go to some starting position. I set the score for the game itself, some variable called score to the value four. Let's actually get rid of that for now. And hopefully I can, I need to rip this off, plop this in here. I'm going to get rid of this variable. Hopefully I can just get delete it. I can delete this. The reason I'm deleting this variable is because I want to see what happens if we get rid of it. So, and variables and score, I'm going to take it, get rid of that. Okay, so here we go. My duck will start off at this particular position. It's going to, uh, it's going to keep on repeating this until it reaches this line down here. The variable, the object called line. If it touches it, it's going to, it's going to stop the game. Uh, I'm going to move seven steps and then if on the edge I'm going to bounce off of it if and so moving by the way it is it will move in the current direction that it's moving in it doesn't go in X and Y coordinates it's just going to move seven steps in whatever direction it's originally going if it's on the on an edge of something if it's touching something it's going to bounce if it's touching the paddle then it's going to so the edge of the game it's going to bounce if it's touching the pedal then I'm going to turn it 180 degrees and move it so flip it around and then move it 10 steps and wait 0.5 seconds let's also just add a um, let's see control I don't know where everything is I'm gonna look for it myself there you go there's a the sound it's there's a lot of hunt and peck um, so I'm gonna start the sound I'm gonna play the duck but I'm gonna play what other sound could I do um, I don't know if I want that duck sound. Well, that's going to be annoying, but let's leave it alone. All right. Every time I hit the paddle, I'm going to pick it, play a duck sound. Why? Because I can. Let's see that in action. Okay. I've lost the game because I wasn't controlling my keyboard right away. All right. There you go. Yes, it's annoying. Fully admit, it's annoying. And hopefully you get the sound of the duck sound when it's bouncing off this thing. Let's stop it. Every time it was touching the paddle, it made a duck quack sound. But let's not do that duck quack sound, so let's move that off. Let's put this, wait five seconds, put it back in here. We can click this and delete it. I'm going to put a new variable in here. I'm going to get a score. So I'm going to, here's my variables. I'm going to take something called score. I can rename it or set it to some duck score let's say so every time I have something called duck score 
I have a variable. I can actually have it show up on the screen. I could set the duck score to some value. I'm going to do that at the very beginning of my game. I'm going to set the value to zero. And every single time I bounce off the paddle, so if I bounce off the paddle, I want to change the duck score by one, so every time I bounce off the paddle, I get a point. That's it. And we're going to see how many times I do this and what happens. And my score goes up, and I'm testing my code. And you'll notice what I want to do is do a little bit of code at a time and then move on for there. Why did I use a duck, you might wonder. And uh, the actual answer is uh, there's absolutely no reason for me to use a duck. I just wanted to have some fun, and so I chose a particular duck. I could have put anything in there. I could have made it into, um, I think I may even be able to change the sprite now. Uh, costumes, that's the duck itself. There's only one image to it. Uh, choose costume, and I'm going to change it to an apple. And now, it instead of a duck, it's going to be an apple bouncing around. But it's still going to make a ducking a quack sound if it bounces off the wall. The fact of the matter is, how this works is we have some code, and each one of these things that we have here are sprites, each or objects in the space. You tell the object what to do and the logic that you expect for the object to follow. So if you expect it to continuously move, you put some kind of repeat loop in there. So we can have something like, here's a control. We can put a forever loop in there where it just does that forever and ever and ever and never stops until you broadcast everything stopping. You can repeat something 10 times, let's say. You can have a wait 10, oh, a second. You can have if and else statement. So if this is true, if whatever's in here is a, which is a true or false statement, like it is touching the line, if that is true, then do what's inside there. Otherwise, do the other thing. We can have it do all sorts of, like, wait until this particular condition is true. We can repeat until a particular condition is true. We can stop all, we can stop certain things. There's a, there's a really large number of options available. The point of assignment one is I am a big fan of if you let people experiment and play around and be creative they will do amazing things if you give them the opportunity and so the point of assignment one is not whether you do it right or wrong it is to just to have fun with it and try something so does your game have to be absolutely perfect absolutely not it has to be good enough that you can play it as a game that it's not just it automatically breaks the user does something they are playing some kind of game there is some purpose to the thing rather than just random dinosaurs falling on your character and you're not supposed to accomplish anything so if we went to dino din uh, dino dinner uh, this thing if we see inside of this what we'll end up getting is is a dinosaur running around trying to eat people and every time they eat someone it goes chomp 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 and you're supposed to be collecting points and, and, and you know, committing genocide. Um, you're supposed to be eating a bunch of ballerinas. The, that's, and you'll actually see how I will actually transition. This is also available to you. I can transition my costume. So if I'm touching the ballerina or champ, I'm going to switch my costume to Dino D, play the recording sound, wait two seconds, switch the costume again, back to what I had before. Uh, otherwise, I just animate between costume B, C, and A each and every time. So hopefully, see, he's animating. And we're going to choose two on the ballerina here. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Yep, yeah, that was my son chewing. Oh, the sounds are not working for the first ballerina. <laughs> okay. Play around with it. Have fun with it. Think about what, you know, break it into a small problem. You, you take a big problem. Like, just deal with the dinosaur. Just do for, if you go back to the Pong, the Duck Pong, for example. I would just do the logic for the ball. Have it bounce around, just bounce around the screen. Then have it bounce around and then fail when it hits the line. And then have the logic that it put a paddle in there. Don't allow you to move the paddle yet. Have it bounce around unless it hits the paddle. Then add the functionality to let you move the paddle back and forth. 
at any given time you can the O oh, and the one last thing the thing that they don't cover in the other video is we can broadcast stuff broadcasting stuff let me stop that here broadcasting stuff is telling everybody hey by the way the game over event happened and if somebody else like for example the paddle or let's say the background gets when they receive a game over event so whenever the game over event is broadcast doesn't matter who broadcasts it then the program will switch the background to the rays it will clear all the graphic effects and then stop everything that's what happens when you lose the game right and when you start the game you switch the background to the moon and then you can so you see the moon and we can switch it to almost anything else we want let's say uh, next background no we don't want next background let's put another background in here uh, backdrops and let's do um, let's put another background in here so let's switch it over to that and baseball one right when we start the game it'll be on baseball one then this and over here it's going to go to the moon when I'm done so let's have a look at this oh I lost it goes to the moon background right it's whatever you want it to be you're switching the background which just changes what the image looks like you can change what the paddle looks like if you lose the game and make it turn transparent or something you can do whatever you're just trying to methodically think through how each of these parts work together to make a game and that's what your original version of pong for the labs are going to be and then afterwards the there i've seen some amazing things from from students last year when it comes to this assignment uh, some People didn't do such a great job. It was just Pong plus plus, or just a slight variant on Pong, and that was really boring. But some people did some amazing work. I will, I really want to see what you can get, uh, what you can do. Not just a minor tweak to Pong, but something your own game with whatever you want it to be. That's where it gets really fun. So, um, so try it out. Have fun with this. Okay, I want to just. Do a quick check, check to see what we've covered right now. Um, it is okay, by the way, if you want to make your own account. That means it might make your your scratch work public, but it does mean you can just share a URL with the TA. Otherwise, if you're submitting on CU Learn and you're submitting a file, you should be able to actually. Let me see if I can do this. You should be able to file, save a, as a copy, or uh, save to your computer. There you go. You would save your file to your computer, and then you can upload that file so you learn but if you do that you need to make sure you give the instructions in some kind in like um, there should be a message box that for when you submit your assignments so you can give instructions for how to play the game the TAs are not expected to know how to play your game without any instructions so you either need to put the instructions on the screen as part of the game or you can put the instructions in when you submit when you submit the file or you can make give them a URL for your project and then you can see what the instructions for the game are there whatever the case is it needs to be painfully obvious what they need to do to play your game because they're actually going to be playing your games to see if they work and if they can't figure it out they can't give you points uh, I have seen some really great work with this again so have fun with this do a little bit at a time don't try and do the entire game then test if it works do a little bit test a little bit test that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of term and C. You just need to make sure to remember to do that. All right. With that being said, I'm going to I'm going to stop the video. I want you guys to ask questions and let's see if we can clarify assign the assignment if there's any if you hit any particular problems. And we'll do that uh, in the synchronous lecture. All right. Thanks everyone.